When I started goofing around with this build, I did it ironically, and then I discovered one blessing interaction that changed everything. Surprising results completely changed my mind, and this Gun Psyker build isn't good for a meme build. It stands on its own as a viable and even strong, fun way to play Psyker. First, let me start by explaining why Gun Psyker is generally a bad idea. For one, your toughness economy is trash. You have a measly 100 base toughness and a pitiful 33% maximum toughness damage reduction from ranged attacks. So you're not exactly going to be going blasting troopers like a veteran. You also have really bad ammo economy, so centering your builds around guns means you'll suffer without a veteran in the team, and even then you'll need to be conservative with it. Really, normally a psyker with a gun is just a worse veteran. Thankfully, the auto pistol gets to ignore those downsides due to one blessing, pinning fire, and its interaction with a sand and blaze. If you've played a little psyker, you know a sand and blaze needs warp battery to kill anything, as four chargers aren't enough on their own. Well, this is where Pinning Fire comes in. As long as the buff is active, it affects all the damage you're currently doing, including damage over time effects. Simply using Ascend and Blaze will give you Pinning Fire stacks, as long as you're holding the auto pistol in your hands when you cast it. Keep the gun in your hands, and Pinning Fire will keep affecting the dot. Keep popping a few shots into anything staggerable to maintain maximum pinning fire stacks. You can keep gaining multiple stacks of pinning fire on a single target. It's not worth getting blaze away up just to make the fire burn harder, so please don't go mag dumping just to get those stacks up. Having a sand and blaze means you can obliterate ranged units and only minimally expose yourself to gunfire. It also means you'll save a lot of ammo against ranged units only really using the auto pistol to keep pinning fire topped off and finish off stragglers. That's the two big downsides of Gun Psyker out of the way, so now, what does this build actually do well? For one, getting Ascendant Blaze to kill stuff with only 4 chargers is a pretty big deal. You've got a button that will delete shooters, stalkers, and in the right circumstances shotgunners as well as clearing an entire horde with minimal investment. The auto pistol with kinetic flare and pinning fire is an absolute monster at destroying specials, especially mutants. It also melts bulwarks. Even without ascendant blaze, you'll make quick work of shooters that are standing close together. Another upside of this build is maintaining extreme sniping potential via brain bursting while having the close range shredding power of the auto pistol. Veteran sacrifices all long range sniping potential by equipping the shredder. You do not. So what do you need to make the most of the funny gun? On tier 1, your best option is Essence Harvest. You have no force weapon and won't have a good way to generate peril and vent quickly without a staff. It also synergizes well with both Rack and Ruin and Ascended Blaze. Note that with Ascend and Blaze equipped, any Soul Blaze kill has the chance to grant you a charge, even when it comes from other psychers. Thanks to Raiken14 for the tip. On tier 2, Rack and Ruin is really your only choice, as Peril Resistance or Force Weapon Damage will do nothing for you. That's not to say it isn't a strong talent in its own right. We can see in this clip just how two applications of Rack and Ruin is enough to outright kill a lot of enemies, both Groaners and Poxwalkers, and any ranged enemy besides Gunners. And that's without making the effect stronger with Pinning Fire. With Pinning Fire up, Everything is dead except for the Drag Rager. It's a lot of damage if you can get two Brain Bursts in a row on elites surrounded by Horde. It's best to have two separate elites to Brain Burst, as the stun from the initial Brain Burst will stop the target, separating it from the Horde you want to burn. Even if you don't kill anything, softening targets up for your Sedan Blaze, your Auto Pistol, or your melee is always nice. On Tier 3, you can take whatever you want. Psychic Communion and Psychnetic's Aura are both strong for Ascendant Blaze builds. If you have trouble keeping charges up, Communion is a good choice. Otherwise, I'd go for Psychnetic's Aura. Cerebral Lacerations is nice to have. It lets you kill Bulwarks in two Brain Bursts, even at zero chargers, and otherwise guarantees your team will be doing 25% more damage to bosses. 
On tier 4, kinetic deflection is always strong, and what I would recommend you take. It makes reviving under melee pressure a lot easier, and just generally increases your survivability. Kinetic shield may seem nice for a gun-oriented build, but 33% at its maximum just isn't enough to justify it. Especially since we don't have a staff to keep peril up while dealing damage. This would be a decent pick if it was based off of warp charges instead. Mind in motion is useless. On tier 5, Kinetic Flare is the funniest part of this build. The entire point of the funny gun build is to make heads explode and banish specials to the Shadow Realm at record speeds. It's also helpful for maintaining your warp charges. Kinetic Overload isn't very good, and if you pick Warp Battery to get a stronger Ascendant Blaze without pinning fire, you might as well play a standard Psyker build, which wouldn't be nearly as funny. Here's what taking Warp Battery gives you for this build. And on tier 6, you may have guessed it, but we need Ascendant Blaze. It kills ranged units, it kills hordes, and everything that isn't dead will be softened up for you to gun it down with ease. For your melee slot, you can kinda run whatever you want. A Deflector Force Sword is always nice to have if you need to cast Ascendant Blaze under fire and secure a safe retreat. I've personally been enjoying Tactical Axes Mark IV and VII with Brutal Momentum a lot. For the gun itself, mine is blessed with Pinning Fire 4. With Pinning Fire 4, you do not need an armor to kill Drake Stalkers with stacks up, but you do with Pinning Fire 3. With Flak, Pinning Fire 4 kills Shotgunners, but not Pinning Fire 3. Of course, these breakpoints aren't vital, since you can simply prioritize the target who you know will not die from the blaze to keep your stacks up and guarantee their deaths. But it's important to know what will die on its own if you can only rely on your burn and your pinning fire stacks. The blessing can gain multiple stacks off of a single enemy. You do not need many targets to keep them up. I've tried Inspiring Barrage and haven't found it to be very useful in practice. In theory, it would be a good way to get a quick toughness boost, but its effect is greatly reduced if you're aggroed by anything or taking fire, due to it affecting coherency regen as opposed to being its own independent source of toughness. I always prefer just getting a brain burst target and quickly dashing into cover if I need a quick boost. Blazeway's description is a little misleading. You don't need to be continuously firing full auto for the blessings to kick in or to maintain it. Here you can see the stacks go up by quickly bursting, reaching the maximum after 23 shots. This makes it a lot better than sustained fire, as that blazing takes a long time to reset and reactivate between bursts, forcing you to nuke your rate of fire to activate it, making it more of a detriment than anything else. The playstyle for this build revolves around getting your stacks up and ready for ascended plays. Target any elite surrounded by smaller enemies with a brain burst to get rack and ruin off. Use your gun to delete specials, to keep pinning fire up after casting Ascendant Blaze, and to finish off ranged enemies. Stay mobile, and abuse your slide to stay alive. It's an aggressive playstyle, and it encourages getting the drop on shooter patrols before they have time to set up. But you do not have the toughness economy to be reckless. Knowing when to dive is vital, and so is knowing when it's time to get out. The build relies a lot on momentum, and thrives when running down targets before they split up or run too far away to be chased down. That's your cue to get out and cast Brain Bursts while sliding back to cover. Don't be afraid to cast Ascent and Blaze even below 4 chargers, as it's still a fantastic tool to get out of dicey situations or guarantee a revive. It still goes through walls, and it still has a reach of 30 meters. I tend to be very liberal with my application of Ascendant Blaze, and never hesitate to cast it on any horde as soon as I reach 4 stacks. Conserving ammo by relying on melee to finish off a horde is often a good call, but if there are elites, ranged enemies, or specials mixed in the horde, it's a good opportunity to start blasting for pinning fire stacks, both to burn off the horde and gun down bigger threats. During events, save your cooldown for waves of ranged enemies or as a panic button to save a life. There is no purpose to either blazing or shooting the trickle. So stick to melee until specials or ranged units show up. 
Your ability to control stuff in melee is excellent as a psyker, as your insanely low stamina regeneration delay lets you spam pushes and push attacks at incredible speeds. This makes you very good at protecting anyone interacting with a cogitator. In situations where the gunfight is way out of your range and or the enemies are past drop down, spam brain burst on priority targets, chain stun reapers, pop gunners, and get value out of rack and ruin. If any melee enemies show up, drop the brain bursting and make space for your veteran so he can safely delete the mean yellow outlines, assuming he's got the awareness to keep his gun out. If you notice the vet rushing in melee, get back to popping heads. And that's it. Have fun sliding around setting everything on fire and annihilating specials. Just remember to leave some ammo for the team. A big thanks to me Mastodon69 for once again helping with the script and making me sound like less of a spastic. I'd also like to thank modding legend Grimalact for properly testing how inspiring Barrage works.